Beneath our feet lies a hidden world, vast laboratories carved into mountains, buried in abandoned mines, and frozen deep under polar ice. Most people will never see them. Some have never even heard of them, and yet they exist. Why are they underground? What are they studying that can't be studied above ground? And why are some of them kept so quiet? The truth is, going underground isn't just about isolation. It's about control of temperature, radiation, vibration, and even attention. The deeper you go, the quieter it gets. And in that silence, science listens for things the rest of the world can't hear. Some of these facilities are public knowledge. Others are barely acknowledged. But all of them are real, and the work happening inside them could change everything we know. In this video, we're going to explore some of the deepest, most fascinating underground laboratories on Earth. Places where science goes silent to hear the universe more clearly. China's Jinping Underground Laboratory, the world's deepest. Underneath the Jinping Mountains in Sichuan Province, China, lies the China Jinping Underground Laboratory. It occupies tunnels bored into marble about 2,400 meters below the surface, roughly equivalent to 6,720 meters of water overhead. This makes CJPL the deepest and best shielded lab on Earth. Scientists drive in by truck to this remote facility. Inside, ultra-sensitive detectors search for exotic physics. CJPL hosts dark matter experiments and a prototype solar neutrino experiment. Indeed, CJPL's cosmic ray muon flux is only about 0.2 muons per square meter per day, far lower than any other lab, giving researchers an almost perfectly silent background for months at a time. The marble here is exceptionally pure, so natural radioactivity is extremely low and radon levels are tiny. This quiet environment improves sensitivity. In fact, CJPL has the lowest measured reactor neutrino background of any lab, making it ideal for precision measurements of solar and geoneutrinos. Plans are underway for CJPL2 in expansion with new cavern halls to host even larger detectors, taking full advantage of the Jinping Mountain's natural shielding. Italy's Gran Sasso Laboratory, Physics in the Mountains. Set beneath Italy's snowy Gran Sasso Massif, the Gran Sasso National Laboratory is carved deep into the mountain. It is the world's largest underground physics lab with three massive vaulted halls accessible by a road tunnel. Suspended under 1,400 meters of rock, LNGS enjoys about a million-fold reduction in cosmic ray background. These vast halls let scientists build enormous detectors for neutrinos, dark matter, and other rare processes. For example, one hall hosts Borexino, while another was home to the Icarus liquid argon neutrino detector. Grand Sasso even has a low background workshop where researchers recover ancient lead from shipwrecks to use as shielding. Grand Sasso also pioneers creative solutions. The Kuori double beta decay experiment uses lead from a Roman shipwreck as extra shielding. A famous episode unfolded in 2011 when LNGS's Opera Neutrino experiment momentarily reported particles traveling faster than light. After a worldwide scramble, the team found the culprit, a loose fiber optic cable in the timing system, and Einstein's speed limit held firm. Today, LNGS continues as a powerhouse of underground physics, hosting new experiments in astroparticle and nuclear science under the shelter of the Italian Alps. France's Modane Laboratory, Europe's Depth Challenge. In the French Alps, the Laboratoire Souterrain de Modan lies in the Fréjus Road Tunnel between France and Italy. The lab sits 1,700 meters below Fréjus Peak, with rock overburden equivalent to about 4,800 meters of water. As of 2012, it was the deepest lab in the European Union. Modan was built in 1982 to search for proton decay and double beta decay, and today it hosts other cutting-edge detectors. For example, it houses NEMO and the Edelweiss dark matter detector. These experiments rely on Modan's depth and low background to achieve sensitivity. The lab is managed by France's CNRS slash 2 p 3 and often collaborates with other European underground facilities, reinforcing its role in continental astroparticle research. Canada's Snow Lab, the Deep Neutrino Observatory. Deep in an Ontario nickel mine, 
Snow Lab is Canada's world-class underground physics facility. It is located 2,000 meters below the surface in Vale's Creighton Mine near Sudbury. Its 2,070 meters of rock overburden provides roughly 6,010 meters water equivalent shielding, making Snow Lab the deepest operational clean lab in the world. Snow Lab grew out of the Nobel winning Sudbury Neutrino Observatory and today hosts experiments like SNO Plus and the DEP Liquid Argon Dark Matter Detector. Its tremendous depth and cleanliness lets scientists probe physics at extreme sensitivity. For instance, the original SNO detector solved the solar neutrino puzzle, earning its team the Nobel Prize, and SNO Plus now looks for neutrinoless double beta decay and other rare processes. Snow Lab also supports geology and biology projects in the dark, ultra clean air, everything from rock mechanics studies to experiments on deep subsurface microbes. USA's Sanford Lab, from gold mine to neutrinos. In the Black Hills of South Dakota, the Homestake Gold Mine has been reborn as the Sanford Underground Research Facility. At roughly 1,490 meters depth, it is the deepest underground science lab in the United States. The mine's deep caverns host world-leading experiments. Dark matter detectors such as Lux Zeppelin and the future Dune Neutrino Observatory. SURF also includes geology and microbiology research labs. For example, the Deep Mine Microbial Observatory explores tiny organisms living in deep mine water. Engineers and students have since built new experimental halls in this old mine, converting it into a modern underground science campus. The site blends history with innovation. SURF preserves sections of the original 1870s mining structure while creating sterile laboratories where new physics happens. Minnesota's Sudan Underground Lab Iron Mine Physics In Minnesota's old Sudan iron mine, scientists took advantage of 713 meters of overlying rock for physics. Early on, they ran Sudan 1 and Sudan 2, searching for proton decay and atmospheric neutrinos. Later, the mine hosted the Minos Long Baseline Neutrino Oscillation Experiment and the CDMS Cryogenic Dark Matter Detector. Sudan's underground rooms were modest, but they showed how a humble iron mine could be converted for advanced research. For a time, the public could even take guided tours of the underground detectors. Today, much of Sudan is part of a state park where visitors learn about its physics history, a tribute to the era when Minnesota's hills hosted Nobel caliber science. UK's Bowlby Laboratory, Science in a Salt Mine. The entrance to England's Bowlby Potash Mine in winter. Here, researchers descend 1.1 kilometers below ground. Britain's deepest mine, where thick rock overhead cuts cosmic rays by about a millionfold. The salt and potash seams in this ancient seabed are naturally low in radioactivity, creating an extremely quiet environment for experiments. Bulby has hosted many experiments, from the Zeppelin series of dark matter detectors to the drift directional dark matter detector. It also hosted geoscience and astrobiology studies. In recent years, UK teams added new projects like Sabre at Bulby. This working mine shows how a nation can turn its natural underground resource into a cutting edge science lab. Mont Terry Rock Lab, studying Earth itself. Far from particle physics, the Mont Terry Rock Laboratory in Switzerland is a geologist's underground workshop. Situated under the Mont Terry Highway Tunnel, it lies about 300 meters below the surface. Here, scientists study the Opalinus clay formation, a fine-grained clay stone proposed as a host rock for deep nuclear waste disposal. Over some 1,200 meters of excavated galleries, researchers perform experiments on groundwater flow, clay expansion when heated, and even microbes living in the deep rock. The findings here help design safe radioactive waste repositories and train engineers in underground construction. Mont Terry shows that underground labs can also advance geology and environmental science, not just particle physics. The Deep Biosphere Life in the Mponing Mine For a truly extreme environment, consider South Africa's Mponing Gold Mine, the world's deepest mine, plunging toward four kilometers depth. Scientists descended there to sample water and rock, hunting for tiny organisms. Remarkably, they found a bacterium thriving deep underground. It lives without any sunlight or surface food. Instead, it obtains energy by splitting water molecules around uranium and sulfur in the rock, feeding itself with hydrogen from natural radioactive decay. 
This discovery changed our view of life's limits. Similar microbes have since been found kilometers underground elsewhere, suggesting a vast hidden biosphere on Earth and clues about life on other worlds. Baksan Neutrino Observatory, Russia, Soviet pioneers in the deep. In the Caucasus Mountains of Russia, the Baksan Neutrino Observatory was a pioneering deep lab for cosmic rays and neutrinos. It consists of a four kilometer horizontal tunnel driven under Mount Indurki. The first underground experiment there was BUST, located about 300 meters below the tunnel entrance. It detected neutrinos from supernova 1987A. Later, a gallium germanium detector was placed even deeper to study solar neutrinos. Baxan continues cosmic ray and neutrino research today, and a small village called Neutrino was built to house the scientists. This Soviet-era site helped start neutrino astronomy decades ago and still contributes to it. Japan's Kamioka Observatory, pioneering neutrino physics. In Japan, the Kamioka Observatory lies roughly 1,000 meters underground in the Mosumi zinc mine near Hida. It is home to the Super Kamiokende detector, a 50 ton tank of ultra-pure water lined with over 11,000 light sensors, and the Camland anti-neutrino experiment. Super Kamiokande famously discovered neutrino oscillations, a result that won the 2015 Nobel Prize. Scientists also use Kamioka to search for proton decay and neutrinos from supernovae. The combination of massive detectors and deep shielding makes it one of the world's premier underground observatories. Svalbard Global Seed Vault, Earth's genetic backup. High on Spitsbergen Island in Norway, under Arctic permafrost, is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This isn't a physics lab, but an extraordinary underground facility for biology. The vault's seed storage rooms are carved about 120 meters into a sandstone mountain under an additional 40, 60 meters of overlying rock. Opened in 2008, it serves as a global insurance policy. Millions of crop seed samples from around the world are kept here in a frozen archive. The vault is kept at 18 degrees Celsius, so seeds remain preserved. It can hold over 4.5 million seed varieties and currently stores more than a million specimens. In effect, Scientists use the mountain as a vault to protect Earth's biodiversity against war, climate change, or other disasters. Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory Universe in the Ice The Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory repurposes Antarctic ice as a giant particle detector. Between 2005 and 2010, hundreds of holes were melted 1.45, 2.45 kilometers deep in the South Pole Glacier, and strings of photodetectors were frozen into each hole. The result is a cubic kilometer 3D array of light sensors embedded under the ice. Scientists use Ice Cube to watch for tiny flashes of light from neutrino interactions, effectively turning Antarctic ice into one of the largest neutrino telescopes on Earth. In 2013, Ice Cube reported the first detection of high energy neutrinos from outside our galaxy, opening a new window on cosmic accelerators. Run year round at the pole, Ice Cube requires crews to winter over in Antarctica. It shows that a clear medium like deep ice can serve the same role as rock for shielding in one of the planet's most extreme environments. U.S. Government Bunkers, Mount Weather, and Cheyenne Mountain. Not all underground facilities are for science. The U.S. government built huge bunkers for continuity of operations. For example, FEMA's Mount Weather facility in Virginia includes an underground complex of about 600,000 square feet, essentially a hidden city of meeting rooms, dormitories, and communications gear where officials could relocate in a national emergency. In Colorado, the NORAD Command Center sits inside Cheyenne Mountain carved under roughly 610 meters of granite. There, blast doors and spring-mounted buildings protect command rooms that could survive nuclear attack. These top-secret sites aren't open labs, but they illustrate how far engineers will go underground to protect people. Andes, South America's first deep science lab. Among the emerging projects that promise to redefine underground science is Andes, the Agua Negra deep experiment site. Nestled deep within the Andes Mountains on the border between Argentina and Chile, this planned facility will be South America's first major underground laboratory. It's a bold vision an entirely new lab excavated within the future Agua Negra road tunnel, descending roughly 1,750 meters beneath solid rock.
While most existing labs reuse old mines, Andes is being built from scratch, solely for science. Its purpose is to create an ultra-quiet environment for the study of elusive particles like neutrinos and dark matter, as well as to conduct geological and biological research at depths previously unexplored in this region. Its southern hemisphere location is particularly significant. Nearly all current underground labs are in the northern hemisphere. Andes will provide a critical counterpart, expanding global coverage in the search for cosmic phenomena. The facility is designed to host international collaborations, primarily among Latin American countries, offering not just new science, but also regional leadership in advanced research. If completed, Andes could fill a crucial gap in the global scientific map, a strategic outpost carved into the living mountain. From physics to biology to national security, the underground world is full of hidden wonders. What started as a rumor about a secret 15 kilometers lab became a tour of real laboratories carved in rock. Each facility uses the Earth's crust as part of the experiment, blocking unwanted noise to let scientists detect rare signals. By going deep in mountains, mines, even glaciers, researchers turn natural shielding to their advantage. The truth is just as fascinating as the myth. Sometimes the greatest discoveries lie hidden right beneath our feet.